Hiya. So let's look at an example of how to use min and max or like what we can kind of do with them. Um, so let's look at an example here. Uh, and we have x1 to xn random variables. Uh, and they're all independent. Uh, and we're going to say each one has this distri exponential distribution and notice how they all have different rates. So we never stated in the last video that they have to be the exact same distribution, just that they're independent. So they all have different rates. And now the question becomes, well, what is the minimum? Okay. So first off, we need to calculate the, um, the antiderivative. In other words, the CDF of the XI. So here, if we have f of xi of x, uh, this is, remember, just e to lambda i, e to the minus lambda i of x. So this is the probability density function for the exponential distribution. So PDF of exponential distribution. All right, so in order to calculate the CDF, f of xi of x, this is the probability that xi is less than or equal to x. So here we have minus infinity to x of lambda i e to the minus lambda i of x dx. Uh, here, this shouldn't be too hard to do for integrals. Um, this should be things we're kind of used to. Uh, this should not be infinity. This is 0 because we're exponential. So we always start at 0. Um, so we have lambda i e to the minus lambda i x divided by minus lambda i. That's what this derivative gives from 0 to x. Uh, plugging in 0, so plugging in x, so these lambdas i's cancel. So we get minus e to the minus lambda i of x. Oh, again, I did this. This should be some other variable so we don't confuse them. This should be y's. We'll do y's. There we go. So we have x minus minus e to the minus lambda i of 0. Um, so we have minus minus is plus, e to the 0 is 1, so 1 minus e to the minus lambda i of x. Uh, do I have room below? Yeah. Um, so what this means is I'm giving, so this gives me the formula. So what this is basically saying is I have my density function for any one, my cumul sorry, my cumulative density function, my cumulative distribu cumulative distribution function, L, this is equal to, so we have this formula for everything, 1 minus e to the minus lambda i of x. This is for everything greater than or equal to x, or greater than x, if x is, if 0 is less than x. greater than or equal to x, uh, and it's 0 if x if uh, x is greater than x. So everything below has to be 0, right? Um, OK, nice. Um, now what we want to do um, is kind of figure out what the min function is. So notice how if all of them are equal to, uh, well, if any of them are equal to 0, then that's the min. Um, and so. Yeah, um, and so this implies that the min of f is equal to 0, right? So if xi, so if f, yeah, if xi is equal to 0, um, no, it's okay. We can kind of do, let's just do the normal way. So what we have is um, our things. So if I look at f min of x, right? By our previous thing, what we have is 1 minus, and then we have to take the 1 minus of each one. So 1 minus f x i of x times 1 minus f x or 1 here, 2 of x times 1 minus f 3x3 three three of x, um, etc. All the way up to 1 minus fxn of x. 
here we know what each of these are um, in whenever it's not uh, xi, right? So as long as it's not zero, um, notice how if it's zero, if one of them are zero, then f min is, uh, so yeah. So if, if f of xi of x is equal to zero for any of them, um, this implies that this multiplication on the right hand side is zero. So this implies that f min of x is equal to one. Uh, no. If they're all zero, if they're all zero, if all zero, then we get zeros and we get ones everywhere. So this becomes zero. Um, if not, um, then we're, if basically whenever we get a zero, right, this is just multiplying by one. So we can kind of just ignore it. Uh, but supposing that they're not all like they're not zeros. Um, what we kind of get is we can kind of plug in our functions here, right? So we have one minus one minus e to the minus lambda one of x uh, one minus one minus e to the minus lambda two. There's a lot of minuses x and a lot of parentheses. Okay, we'll stop here. Dot dot dot. One minus one minus e to the minus lambda n x etc. So let me look at one of these on the side. 1 minus 1 minus e to the minus lambda 1 of x. This is just 1 minus 1 plus e to the minus lambda x. So these ones cancel and I just get e to the minus lambda 1 of x. So really I have 1 minus e to the minus lambda 1 of x plus times e to the minus lambda 2 of x times e to the minus lambda 3 of x. Uh, e to the lambda minus lambda n of x. These we can now add together, and we get 1 minus e to the minus lambda 1 plus lambda 2 all the way up to li lambda n of x. And that's kind of what we end up getting, as long as they're not 0. So if any of them are 0, then the lambda i would just be not there, because we just get 0 for that one. Uh, so in other words, what we basically have um, is the CDF, in other words, um, x min is exponential um, with rate lambda 1 plus lambda n. Not bad. A lot of work, but wasn't too, too bad. Um, all right, and that's it for this video. Uh, in the next video, we'll cover our final topic um, in, I think, one video on quantile functions. Uh, so I will see you then.